I want to thank all of you for joining us today to honor uh, the living legacy of the great Ethel Kennedy. And we are here to officially dedicate uh, this bridge and to uh, name it in her honor, which is a momentous occasion for us here in the District of Columbia and for all those who gathered uh, with us uh, today. I want to thank all of those who worked uh, so hard over the years to help make this event happen. And first and foremost, I want to thank Mrs. Kennedy uh, herself for the great work that she has done on behalf of uh, so many. Uh, you'll hear from some of the folks I'm going to mention, but I want to uh, introduce uh, or acknowledge the presence of our Attorney General, uh, Eric Holder, who is here with us today. <laughs> to uh, Congressman Steny Hoyer. Uh, <laughs> and to a number of other people and... Um, if I didn't mention your name and you feel it should be mentioned, consider it mentioned, okay? Uh, and everybody else. Uh, I want to thank uh, also Bob Nixon and Brenda Richardson, who you're going to hear from uh, shortly, uh, and the entire board of the Earth Conservation Corps. And I think we know Mrs. Kennedy has played an instrumental role in the Earth Conservation Corps even existing uh, today. Um, also, our uh, director, of the uh, Department of Transportation. Matt Brown is here with us. I also want to acknowledge two other people. I just asked them if they were having a, a conversation about transportation issues. Uh, our former Director of Transportation uh, and the city, former City Administrator and now the head of the General Services Administration at the federal level, Dan Tangalini. Dan, we're glad you're here with us too. And seated next to him is one of our distinguished, uh, now former Secretary of Transportation, a Secretary of Transportation, Rodney Slater. Rodney, we thank you for being here with us, too. Uh, we're gathered here today uh, to uh, honor a uh, great American. Uh, and of course, I think we all know that her uh, late husband was a great American uh, also. And uh, the naming of this bridge today uh, joins with the uh, stadium uh, that sits on the banks of the Anacostia River uh, as well, uh, and that is the Robert F. Kennedy Stadium, where our Washington football team at one time played, the Washington Senators played, the uh, Washington Nationals played, and the D.C. United still plays there until we have a new stadium for them to move into. So we'll do everything we can to make sure that RFK Memorial continues to be uh, an active uh, place. Um, Mrs. Kennedy, you have meant such a great deal uh, to the District of Columbia over the uh, years as well as today. And uh, we honor you today by naming this bridge uh, for you. Um, of course, it spans our beloved uh, Anacostia River, uh, which we're working hard as a part of our sustainability plan, our 20-year sustainability plan, to be able to make the, the river once again uh, fishable, and once again, swimmable. And I think we know that is a daunting uh, task. It is a vision, and I think we can do that. We're seeing progress already uh, with the river, and we're going to continue to work uh, on making that happen. Um, I think many of you know that Mrs. Kennedy worked tirelessly with uh, district youth uh, in the neighborhoods uh, that adjoin the Anacostia River, uh, many of which are some parts of our city that have some of the greatest challenges uh, here in the District of Columbia. Uh, her advocacy and hard work have had positive effects for the entire district. Uh, but within, uh, within this part of our city, Mrs. Kennedy's fierce passion for environmental and social justice is the most pronounced. And again, we thank you on behalf of the 647,000 people who live in the city for stepping up and doing that. We know the spirit that you bring to this and the, and the spirit that you've demonstrated uh, over the years. And once again, we hope to be able to capture that uh, in the naming of this bridge 
and will be one of the things that's talked about uh, as this bridge is talked about uh, when people say this is the Ethel Kennedy uh, Bridge uh, here in the District of Columbia. Uh, I want to introduce a couple people now who I think I can rightfully call uh, environmentalists. Uh, Bob Nixon is the founder, the chair, the moving force. Uh, he has been so much of everything, really, uh, for the Earth Conservation Corps. And he's going to be joined by someone who we know and, and love and uh, work with so much. The work that uh, she has done over the years is extraordinary. So uh, Bob Nixon and Brenda Richardson, please come on up now. Wow, you should see yourselves from this view. It's amazing. I, I just want to say that, first of all, I'm very, very grateful to have been on the board of the Earth Conservation Corps with Bob Nixon for the past 20... It's been a while. 20, it's been <laughs> over 20 years. And Mrs. Kennedy has been with us. And when I was thinking about what I had to say, because they said I didn't have much time, Ethel, um, this is what I thought when I thought of you, and I miss you very much, and I'm very grateful to see you today. But when I think of Ethel Kennedy, I think of an extraordinary woman, a phenomenal and beautiful woman with a loving spirit. And one of the things that I will say about her was that she always made us feel special. In light of the fact that a lot of our core members uh, passed away and we had some hard times. Ethel was always that spirit that told us that we can keep moving and keep doing it. And she was also a champion for the organization. And we're so grateful that today the Earth Conservation Corps still stands in part, large part, because of my dear friend Ethel Kennedy. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. Uh, I want to set the record straight. This, I'm Bob Nixon, but uh, this is not something Ethel wanted at all. Uh, there, there was a Mr. Attorney General. There was quite a cloak and dagger operation at on all branches of the city government. I think some federal agencies involved, also, to to allow this, to enable this bridge to get named legislation passed without Ethel Kennedy finding out and derailing it. And uh, I'm serious. And uh, uh, Mayor Williams tried, didn't make it. Uh, uh, Mayor Fenty got, uh, teamed up with then Council Member uh, Gray, Council Chair Gray, and the City Council, and very quietly passed the legislation. But that was years ago. It took years more for, it took so many years because uh, it took years for our elected officials to stir up the courage to tell her. <laughs> and then years, and it took uh, Dan Taglarini to, 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 that, to, uh, to that, he stepped up to the plate and gave her the news. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, several years more for her to accept the fact. But we're so thrilled. Uh, that you had, that uh, that you did, and uh, I just want to give you a couple inside, uh, some information on how we came to be here, because we would not, a lot of young people wouldn't be here, the this, uh, and this event would not be happening, uh, if it was. We wouldn't be celebrating a restored, a restoring river, if it wasn't for Ethel and. It's I, about 20, over 20 years ago. I saw a picture of a creek just upstream uh, that was just filled with tires, and I I was so shocked that I I came to Washington and uh, met Brenda Richardson, who introduced me to some young people who were in, who said they would they just wanted to clean up that creek, uh, and we uh, then I went to drove over to Hickory Hill to see Ethel, and I said, we're trying to figure out a way to clean this place up. And she said, well, call Bobby. Get my, he's the riverkeeper. Get my, my children should help you. I said, they're going to, they're, they're in for sure. But I just have a hunch you should come look at this. And she, we, she drove over, and we saw the 
went and visited the creek and she said, the, you know, I crossed a beautiful Potomac River to get here. And this is, this is a tale of two cities. And, and a few weeks later, we had uh, nine young men, men and women from Valley Green, uh, the uh, Paris Glen Denning and a few others in uh, climbing into that creek and and Ethel was with them. Who here was in that creek that day? Okay, and core members here, some of the pioneer core members. So I want to congrat, thank you all. Um, and, and we came and cleaned up that creek and the core members said, we're just gonna keep going. And we came to, to River Terrace in Kingman Island, my favorite parts of the river. That's where uh, the community asked us to, to help save this national park across the way. But it's been really the quiet work of Ethel. I don't think people who were on the other end of the phone line thought it was quiet, but unheralded <laughs> work. And many of you here today, you know, she brought you down to the river. I know uh, the congressman's been down many times uh, and a champion uh, for the river. Not just to show anyone she could what these young people were doing, this positive work. Uh, the sec uh, Secretary of the Treasury, uh, Rodney Slater, was also cajoled often to come down. And, uh, and just what she did, it was just quite amazing, the, the army of people that you brought here to, uh, to turn this around and you know, to, to support these kids who first saw a garbage dump and and had a dream of, to make this a river of hope. You really have today, and uh, we just appreciate, as Brenda said, the resources you brought, but also your humor and your spirit, and in those toughest times, saying, supporting us, and the first thing you all, almost always said was, may I call the family on a day when we had a, we lost a core member, and I should, uh, I want to thank Ivory Teague and his family here today. Uh, this would have been Diamond's, uh, uh, Ivory and Florence are Diamond Teague's parents. It would have been Flo uh, Diamond's 30th birthday today. So uh, thank you all. And thank you, Ethel. This is uh, so thrilling to be here. And just as it, so you all know how m deeply she knows this, this community, the real reason she's excited about this bridge is she believes the, the best cheeseburgers in the country are at Langston Golf Course. So, <laughs> Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Brenda and Bob, and thank you for the work you have done historically uh, to help us restore this important asset uh, to the District of Columbia, and we will continue uh, working to make it a place that we can all be proud of, that people really can go out and swim and they really can fish and they can feel comfortable eating what they may catch uh, when, they, when they fish. Uh, we have some other folks from the uh, Earth Conservation Corps uh, here today, and I want to introduce the uh, youth director, uh, Lashante Moore. Lashante. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I think back to the first time I met you, Ms. Kennedy. Uh, you came down to the pump house, to the Henson Center, and we were going to do a river tour with you. And all of us were so nervous. Um, all we knew were, we knew that we had met your son, so we were in awe of him already. And we were like, okay, this is mom. We have to be on our best behavior. We have to be polished and, you know, spit shine for you. So we were all so nervous. And when you came, um, we wanted to kind of like roll out the red carpet for you. And so as we're getting on the boat and we're like grabbing your arm and saying, let me help you. And you're like, get off me. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> I was in the boat before you were born. So we were like, you know, okay, <laughs> no problem. But you've always been so nice and kind to us. Um, as core members, you've always um, been easy to talk to where we thought that you weren't going to be. You're funny and nice, and 
I just want to thank you personally for giving me the chance to meet you and get to know you. So I want to thank you personally for that. Um, I also want to thank you, yes, for the contributions that you made to the Earth Conservation Corps um, in the past, but it really set us up for a great future um, that we have ahead of us. We have a chance to be a part of an initiative that's going to open up the doors for youth all over the country to be able to do service in all, in all of the communities in this country, and it's very important work, and I like to think that because of you um, and your help here, Earth Conservation Corps has given us a bigger voice and had us able to do this. So thank you again from everyone at Earth Conservation Corps. We definitely love you. We're gonna have some of the core members, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, we're gonna bring a couple of core members up. They want to say a few words to you as well. Okay. Uh, we're gonna start with Rodney Stotts. Yeah. 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 Rodney's an original core member. Hello, my name is Rodney Stotts. I'm 43. I grew up in Southeast Washington, D.C. And I'd really like to thank you, Ms. Kennedy. I love you. You came out, you were one of the first ones to put waders on and get in Lower Beaver Dam Creek and help us remove those tires and car engines. So I'd like to thank you. And next up, we have Anthony Satterwhite, white another original core member. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Thank you guys for coming out today. Um, Ms. Kenny, I just want to say that it was an honor to not only be in your presence over 22 years ago, but to be in your presence now. And I want to say the, uh, what sticks out in my mind was leaving Southeast D.C., getting in my car, driving to McLean, Virginia. <laughs> yes, yes, um, to your house. So you allowed the, uh, the core to read their journals, and we had a fundraiser there and raised a lot of funds for the uh, Earth Conservation Code to be successful and to be doing as well as we are today. I just wanted to say that everything is, is good and dreams do come true. Everything is possible, and from Valley Green to at Ethel Kennedy's dinner table was like, a blast in my brain. You was like, <laughs> yes. You, 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 the Kennedys are, are our royalty. So just thank you so much for everything that you've done for me personally and the Earth Conservation Corps for over 20 years. Twan Woods. Hello, my name is Twan Woods. I'm 38 years old. I'm from Ward 8 Southeast. Um, um, I've been a member of the Earth Conservation Corps for um, some time, and with them, I, um, I developed my own community-based group called Ward 8 Entertainment. And um, I'd like to thank Ms. Kennedy, and I'm, I'm happy that we're dedicating this bridge to her today. She really deserves it. And it's a beautiful area. It's, um, it's a real change from what it used to be. And thank you for helping us bring back the bald eagle to our nation's capital. Because we were people that didn't know nothing about um, no kind of bird like that. Uh, people in, in my community, is it probably won't happen again where people from my community get a chance to work with something um, extraordinary like um, um, a bald eagle. So thank you. I want to bring up Diamond Teague's family, his mom and sister. And all the little people. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mrs. Kennedy and everyone that is here. On the behalf of the Tig family, we would like to say thank you. 
we love you. And during the time that we lost Diamond, you came to our house and you comforted us, and we appreciate that. So therefore, we'd like to say thank you on that behalf of the Tig family. And now I have a Diamond's daycare and my grandchildren, and these are some of my little daycare kids and my grandchildren. <laughs> so I say, God bless you. Thank you. Come on, children. Keisha Alvarenga. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Keisha Alvarenga. I'm 22 years old. I grew up in Washington, D.C. And I would like to say thank you to Ms. Kennedy for c continuing the battle to save Popular Point National's ballpark. Thank you so much, Ms. Kennedy. Michelle Flowers. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michelle Flowers, and I grew up in Anacostia neighborhood. I graduated from Anacostia Senior High School, and um, I'm interested in environmental science, and I graduate from the Earth Conservation Corps next month, and I'll also be starting my new job at the Environmental Protection Agency and the Human Resources Department. So... <laughs> I just want to um, thank you so much, Ms. Kennedy, because without you, I probably wouldn't even had this thing going on. So thank you so much. Sherman Keith. How y'all doing? Um, my name is Sherman Keith Jr. And I was a core member 2004. And uh, me and Shantae were co-squad co leaders. She was the good cop. I, don't know, I was the good cop. She was the bad cop. Um, I just remember your son jumping in the water. No waiters. A big gash in his leg. Just getting up all the trash. And I'd like to thank you for the heritage and the heritage island and keeping it open for these young, these young kids to clean and keep it, keep it positive. So, thank you. David. My children ate my flower, Ethel. Um, my name is David Smith, uh, born and raised right here in Ward 7, Washington, D.C. Dean Wood, for all my Dean Wood people in the house. Um, Got to keep it, you know, a little D.C. Um, Ethel, I want to thank you for a lot of things, but first I want to thank you for the example that you set for me as a mother. Um, in raising my children, my father used to always use your family as this beacon example of, of carriage in the midst of, of the battle. And you've always been, so to meet you when I came to the Earth Conservation Corps was something that I never dreamed possible. Um, and then to meet your sons and work with Bobby. I was there the day he jumped into Anacostia with the gash on his leg, and despite my efforts to get him to not do it, he kind of gave me that Ethel Kennedy look. That, um, <laughs> um, one, of the, one of the most important things for the Corps, um, as I worked with them, was Kingman Heritage Island. The bridges were burned down, and it was largely a part of your effort and Ebal's effort to connect with the Navy Seabees to get those bridges rebuilt. And now the city has invested in the islands and they're becoming an educational facility for young people. And um, that's largely a part of you, so your legacy continues. And I'll, I'll end by saying that the legacy of a tree is the fruit that it bears. So you are a very blessed woman and your legacy lives on in all of us here today. Thank you.
Last but not least, Tendani. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Tendani in Pulabusi L, and uh, I'm a proud Earth Conservation Corps alumni. And uh, when I joined the Earth Conservation Corps, when I was invited and recruited by David Smith, uh, I was going through a lot of uh, struggle. And uh, this gave me an opportunity to do a few things. Uh, discover, not only rediscover my, my talent as an artist, but to actually have a platform to be an artist. And this is something that uh, I remember Bob Nixon. When I first met you 10 years ago, Bob had asked me to uh, make you a birthday card. And uh, I did it like character style and kind of drew your face on it and like happy birthday and stuff like that. And that was the first time I met you. And, and that was my first celebrity birthday card that I ever made. <laughs> And um, it was wonderful. You were a very nice, humble person. And, um, you know, not only did you help uh, get the Navy CBs involved with the bridge, but also the pump house. And that was a heck of a work right there. Um, the pump house to this day is still magnificent. We still host a lot of community events right there. And so I got to give it to Bob for keeping this river uh, of hope campaign alive. Uh, you know, throughout that, I was able to continue my artwork and produce a series of paintings. And so when you were the mayor, Mr. Williams, uh, Miss Kennedy, uh, you came down to an art show I did with the first River of Hope painting that's still in the mayor's press room to this day. And you came out to my art show and saw my artwork. So I really appreciate your support just on a grassroots level and just, you know, coming around. Um, Earth Conservation Corp has changed a lot of life. And without champions like you, uh, some of our lives would be different, most definitely. And I'm glad today that my life is different in the best way possible because of your hard work, others, and the core for keeping this coming. So thank you so much. Thanks for being a champion. You're so wonderful. Weren't those young people fantastic? How about a big hand for them? You know, when we initially talked about the point of a formal dedication, there was a suggestion that we walk across uh, to the bridge. That was quickly vetoed, uh, <laughs> given, given, given the length of that walk. Uh, so we're going to do a little bit differently. And I'm going to ask, uh, acknowledge his presence, first of all. And that is, of course, former Mayor Anthony Williams, who has joined us today, too. If you would come up, Mayor. <laughs> Mayor. We're going to ask you and Dan Tangalini if you will do the honors of unveiling the official uh, designation of this bridge as the Ethel Kennedy Bridge. How about everybody give us a, a count on three, okay? One, two, three. And now it's fitting that we have uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. Uh, come up and say a few words uh, to us on behalf of the family, Mr. Kennedy. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor Gray. And uh, I also just want to thank Steny Hoyer and, and um, the Attorney General Holder for being here and, and Mayor Anthony Williams for honoring uh, my mom with their presence. There's all very, very busy people, and I want to thank you for taking the time and tell you how much it means to us that you come out here. Um, uh, I'm going to just say that Mommy has a very, very long history with Anacostia, and it, uh, and it goes beyond her love of the Redskins, which, uh, and, and the stadium that's named after my father, her husband. When we were growing up, she did a very, very famous fundraiser every day year for uh, called the, the Hickory Hill Pet Show, which uh, the, the funds from that pet, pet show went to Northwest Northeast Settlement House and to Anacostia. So she had a, a, um, a long relationship with, with this community and built a swimming pool in it and, and built uh, uh, some other facilities that people didn't have access to in this community. And we uh, had a great time at that pet show and some of the greatest moments of our youth were watching uh, George Bush 
go down the slide for life, which really should have been called the slide for death, uh, because <laughs> it ended almost half the time at the Georgetown um, Hospital emergency room. Uh, and also Muhammad Ali go down and end up in the in the bushes and then fell 20 feet. And then she had convinced him to get into a hot air balloon and the balloon drifted off all over the horizon. <laughs> the best time was when she called Barnum and Bailey Circus and had and said, could they borrow, an, she borrowed an elephant. And they said, that's actually in 120 years the first time we've had that request, but they said, as long as nobody rides it. And she said, oh yeah, okay. So it got over there. And she said, why would anybody want an elephant if you couldn't ride it? <laughs> so she was charging 50 cents for rides. And the elephant, whose name was Susie, enjoyed it so much that she would not get back in the trailer when they were trying to. And instead, she dashed through the crowd. And, um, and uh, there was about 2,000 people. And she was going about 40 miles an hour. And she saw Amy Carter. And she hated Amy Carter for some reason. And she tried to get her. She, she kept making feints. And the Secret Service men were surrounding Amy Carter and moving her away with their guns drawn. And we were yelling, don't shoot, don't shoot. And then they took Amy Carter and they threw her up on top of the tack room. And the elephant um, went, crashed through the barbed wire fence and went onto our next door neighbor, Mr. Ormston, who was pruning his raspberry bushes. <laughs> And the elephant, <laughs> the elephant w w stopped next to him and then just started eating his raspberry bushes. <laughs> and he looked up at the elephant and then he just shook his head and he looked down because <laughs> he was used to all the craziness coming from Hickory Hill. And after it stuffed itself with raspberries, it came over to the pool and, and drank about half the pool through its <laughs> trunk. And then he went back. But there were many, many stories like that. But they. That long <laughs> that I didn't intend to tell today, but that long history of that relationship with Anna Costa, you know, and the the thing about that pet show was that it, that it was intended to connect the kind of affluent people from the suburbs of Washington D.C. and remind them that they had a connection to the people of the inner city, and that's what this bridge does. It links. Um, it links two parts of this city, and it brings this city, somebody said it's the tale of two cities, Bob Nixon said that, but it brings the, the city together. And my mother recognized from the outset um, that, you know, that the uh, environmental issues here in Anacostia were civil rights issues, and that, you know, uh, that it's always the poorest communities that, that shoulder the heaviest burden of of environmental pollution. Four out of five toxic waste dumps in this country is in a black neighborhood. The largest toxic waste dump in America is Emile, Alabama, which is 75% black. The highest concentration of toxic waste, uncontrolled toxic waste dumps in America is the south side of Chicago. The most contaminated zip code in California is East LA. There's 1.5 million Hispanic youth poisoned every year in farm workers by pesticides. Uh, Navajo youth ha have a thousand times the, the rate of sexual organ cancer as other Americans because of the thousands of tons of toxic waste tailings, uranium tailings that are, are disposed of on their reservation land. Where Kathleen worked because of my mother's influence, it's not an accident that this, um, that this coal burning power plant was put in this neighborhood you know, which is gushing PCBs into that river. And a single molecule of PCB will cause, uh, is an endocrine disruptor, will cause sexual dysfunction in children, and it will cause loss of IQ, permanent loss of IQ in those kids. And that's gonna be, you know, largely because of the work that we've done, that we sued them for PCBs. The river keeper was here. Can you raise your hand, Bob Hollenbrook? Right? And, and we're going to uh, blow up this on, you know, not in a terrorist kind of way, <laughs> but in a, but an organized. <laughs> so, and it's, and it's going down. And I think in two weeks, they're going to, they're going to blow this place up, um, which is good. It's a coal burning power plant, uncontrolled mercury discharges, 
raining down on this community. And you know, people say environmental crime is not real crime, but it is. If you if I if if you put mercury into a fish and a child eats that fish or a pregnant woman eats that fish and her daughter when she's in fourth grade fifth grade sixth grade she can't read a book as easily as she's supposed to or she can't solve a math problem the way that she's supposed to and god gave her the brain to solve that math problem but that power plant took it away from her because they were trying to make a little extra money by not putting in a scrubber that's a crime and it's as bad as any crime you can commit. It's child abuse. It's, it's stealing the aspirations of that child. It's stealing her self-esteem. It is, uh, it's, it's assault and battery. It's a million different crimes. And mommy recognized we needed to treat it as a crime. And when they tried to build a, a Disneyland and casino on this island to a private developer, it was a national park. You can't do that on a national park. Imagine if they did that in the Grand Canyon. Imagine if they did that in Yellowstone. Imagine if they tried to do it on Roosevelt Island, which is a national park. Nobody would even try it. You know what they did with this national park for 40 years? They dumped all the garbage from all the other national parks in the white parts of the district onto this one. This is a beautiful island. Then they tried to sell it to this crazy person from uh, uh, South Asia, a really nutty, you know, cold person to build Disneyland there, right? And she was able to get this through. And the only reason was, and you know, all of the, 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 the first civil rights issues in this country were fought over parks and access to parks. If this was in any other place, it would be a national jewel. But because it was in Anacostia, it was treated first as a dump and as an opportunity for somebody to make, you know, a few bucks in friction costs as they, you know, they let somebody build a, a terrible development there. But mommy understood this, and she understood before anybody used the term environmental justice, the relationship between civil rights and environmental pollution. And that, um, you know, that we're not protecting the environment for the sake of the fishes and the birds. We're protecting it for our own sake because we recognize that nature is the infrastructure of our communities, that if we want to meet our obligation as a generation, as a nation, as a civilization, which is to create communities for our children that provide them with the same opportunities for dignity and enrichment and prosperity and good health as the communities that our parents gave us. We've got to start by protecting our environmental infrastructure, the air we breathe, the water we drink, the rivers, the landscapes that connect us to our past, to our history, that provide context to our communities and that are the source ultimately of our values, our virtues, our characters of people. The best measure of how democracy functions is how it distributes the goods of the land, the commons, the public trust assets, the things that you can't reduce to private property ownership, but by their nature are owned by all of us, the air, the water, wildlife, the fisheries. Every child in this district, whether they're black or white, humble or noble, rich or poor, has a right to go down to that river, throw in a plug, pull out a shad or a striped bass or a catfish, and bring it home and feed it to their family with the security they're not going to poison somebody. They have that right. And that right has been stolen. And mommy understood that. And you know there are communities like this all over the country, but nobody was standing up and speaking for this community. And I'm so grateful to her for her example and you know, for her inspiration and for con her consistency that she didn't just parachute in, stay a day, and leave. She's been here for 40 years working for this community. And I want to thank all the members of the community for remembering her work and for the kind words you said about her. Thank you very much. <laughs> That was quite eloquent, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. How about another big hand for uh, Bobby Kennedy? <laughs> Jr. I appreciate you mentioning this plant across the street uh, because some of us as well have been fervently uh, working to be able to move it out of here. And uh, it was decommissioned uh, in 2012 and hasn't been used since. And now that it will be coming down, it will be a way of, frankly, uniting two very rich communities, rich with the human spirit, River Terrace and Parkside. And uh, we'll figure out a way to do that more effectively. 
once this plant uh, is out of there, which has not been a not been a good thing for anybody. All right, please join me now in uh, welcoming our Attorney General Eric Holder, who for closing comments, Attorney General. Well, thank you, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. It is a privilege for me to be here today and to be a part of this, uh, this dedication ceremony. It's a great pleasure to join so many distinguished guests. Good to see Mayor Williams here. Uh, we did a lot of good work together in the, back in the day. Rodney, good to see you here as well. Um, and it's always good to have Steny Hoyer nearby, you know. He, uh, he always asks me, he always says, how are you doing, Eric? But he always wants to really, you know, where's my wife? Because they, they, they do work together as well. Um, it's also a pleasure to have uh, the Earth Conservation Corps members here as well. And it's great to see you all. And then the members of the, uh, the, Kennedy, the Kennedy family uh, in honoring really an extraordinary woman who uh, not only witnessed but helped to shape a, uh, a critical period of American history, a leader who has stood as a, as a pillar of strength, and not just for her family but for our communities and for our nation and a pioneer who has served throughout her life as a champion for causes ranging from civil rights to the eradication of poverty, the empowerment of young people, and the conservation of the Anacostia River right here in Washington, D.C. Now, as we've heard this afternoon, Ethel Kennedy is no less than an American icon and nothing short of a living legend. But she's also a steadfast friend to those in need, a staunch advocate for those who are at risk, and a principal leader in this community, in Washington, D.C., from those singular years at Hickory Hill, half a century ago, when she and her husband regularly con convened gatherings of luminaries from across this city and across the globe, uh, to her example of grace and resilience in the face of great tra tragedy, from her leadership and her extensive travels on behalf of the Robert F. Kennedy Center for Justice and Human Rights, to her tireless work on behalf of the people of Southeast Washington, as you've, as you've heard today, and which I don't think many people really knew about. She has devoted her life to the betterment of others. And like her late husband, who was my most accomplished predecessor as Attorney General of the United States, uh, a man who, is, uh, who I try to live up to uh, e every day. And like so many other members of the storied Skakel and Kennedy families, she has never been afraid to roll up her sleeves, to rally those around her, and to lead from the front lines for the fight for change. And nowhere, nowhere is this more evident than here on the banks of the Anacostia, in vibrant neighborhoods that have too often been forgotten amid a fragile environment that's been too long neglected. Now, during my service as a judge here in Washington, D.C., and later as U.S. Attorney for the District of Columbia in the mid-1990s, I, I saw firsthand the intractable, uh, seemingly intractable public safety challenges and the the really vicious cycle of poverty, criminality, and, and incarceration that have gripped this community and stolen far too many promising futures. Indeed, I think as we've heard this afternoon, uh, a shocking number of, of ECC members, the best and the brightest, the, the future of, of this city, have fallen victim to senseless violence since this effort began. But as a result of the courage, the resolve, and the tireless work of community activists, core members, and, and leaders like Ethel Kennedy, over the last two decades, we have seen tremendous progress, and we've brought about, I think, lasting and positive change. Now, there's no question that significant challenges remain before us, but thanks to the principles stands that you've all taken, the fight that Mrs. Kennedy is still helping to lead, and the work of community members who have rallied to build the brighter futures that every D.C. resident, regardless of where you live, that every D.C. resident deserves, countless lives have been improved and have even been saved. And these beautiful natural areas are, are being preserved in, as well. Uh, I think that's why it's fitting that we gather here today alongside uh, ECC leaders and proud residents of Ward 6, 7, and 8 to thank Ethel Kennedy for the work that she has championed, to bestow just a small measure of the recognition and the public acclaim that she, I think, so richly deserves, and to honor her indelible contributions to this community by naming one of the original connectors that links Anacostia to Greater Washington, and to do so in her honor. Throughout her really extraordinary life, Ethel Kennedy has shown us by word and also by deed that every American has not just the power 
but the responsibility to help improve and to transform the world around them. And through her service, she has inspired countless individuals in and, and far beyond this crowd, including me, to follow her example. She has never pursued the national spotlight, but she's also never failed to embrace the considerable duties and the substantial burdens that circumstance and history have placed squarely on her shoulders. So today we pay tribute to this remarkable leader. We thank her for bearing these burdens and leading these efforts with grace and also with poise. We declare that she is not merely one of the best among us, she is a national treasure. And And we pledge, we pledge to you, Mrs. Kennedy, that we will honor your achievements by rededicating ourselves right here and right now to the work that must remain our common cause by carrying on the fight for juvenile and environmental justice and by continuing to support and empower those who need our help the most across the country as well as here in Washington, D.C., on both sides of the bridge that will forever bear her name. So thank you once again, Mrs. Kennedy, for all that you have done and that you've meant to this community as well as to our nation. I am honored to share this auspicious moment with you, and I look forward to all that we will do and achieve together in the months and the years to come. Thank you so much. You know, I would be remiss if I didn't recognize that we, uh, to give an opportunity to say a few words, one of the dear friends uh, of the District of Columbia whose decades of service uh, are lore. So please join me in welcoming Congressman Steny Hoyer. All that has been said is all that needed to be said. I'm not sure why Vince recognized me to be redundant, but redundant I will be perhaps just a little. As you heard, I've had the opportunity to sail down the Anacostia River with Ethel Kennedy to see her excitement, to see her inspiration and her energy that she brought to this endeavor. Uh, she has made a difference. And Ethel, as I sat there, I'm going to give a graduation speech uh, at the University of Maryland, and I'm going to quote uh, Bob Kennedy uh, when he spoke to those students uh, at South Africa. And he said, all of us will ultimately be judged, and as the years pass, we will surely judge ourselves on the effort that we have contributed to building a better society and the extent to which our goals and ideals have shaped that effort. I don't know anybody whose goals and ideals have shaped her life any more than Ethel Kennedy. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, as we uh, adjourn, for those who can, I'd like you to please stand one more time with a standing ovation for a true icon, Ethel Kennedy. Thank you, and those who would like to walk across to the bridge and see the uh, actual uh, dedication uh, placard there, you are welcome to do so. Otherwise, have a great day. <laughs>